Ultimate Builder Custom Bike Show. I have the pleasure of standing here with the Guinness Book of World Record holder for the fastest woman in the world on a motorcycle, Leslie Porterfield. I believe you went 232.522 miles an hour. Tell me about that experience. Yes, that was uh, an amazing record. I hold many records. Uh, Bonneville's almost like a different planet, so this has been an exciting trip of my life, uh, going out there and setting these records. So, what other land speed records do you hold? I have several land speed records. I hold the 1000cc production record. I also have a 209 mile an hour record on an unfaired bike that got me into the Bonneville 200 mile an hour club. It was my first record, the one that also publicized on the Discovery Channel. Uh, I hold several records in the 1350 to 2000 cc classes. Um, it's, uh, and my top record, of course, being the 232 mile an hour record, in which I blew my engine on my return run. All right, I know you've done some testing in wind tunnels. Tell me about that experience. The design and engineering of these bikes has been the most interesting because there's not any other aspect of racing we can really take uh, the engineering from. So to go into a wind tunnel situation and, and and play with the aerodynamics of it. It's it's actually a lot like a lot like aircraft, uh, you know, aircraft engineering, and it it's just really been eye opening on on what exactly the wind does around the motorcycle and and what provides help with traction and aerodynamics. You know, it's uh, it's been a great learning tool, and it's it's been helpful in in getting me faster and faster. Now, did you make changes to, let's say, your position or maybe the suit you wear? Absolutely. Changing body position is so important. So for me, being on the bike in the wind tunnel, not only having the, the bike and working on the shape of the bike, but being able to focus on my body position and what the exact body position that I need to hold uh, to be as aerodynamic as possible has helped me tremendously. I, what's it take to be a good rider? Let me let me phrase that. What's it take to be a great rider like yourself? Well, oh, it, it, it takes a lot of perseverance. I've come off the bike before, so uh, it it takes a lot of perseverance. You have to be committed to going and doing it. Um, I'm always open and willing to learn new things. I, I always learn new things every time I'm on a motorcycle or back out at the salt and. You know, I just try to improve myself every time I'm on it, learn from my mistakes, and keep going faster and faster. I'm guessing when you said come off the bike, you don't mean at the end and step off. No, I mean a, an accident, accidental dismount, to a, meaning a crash. So I, I broke seven ribs, punctured a lung, and had a concussion. And I, I really like breaking records a lot more than I like breaking bones. Well, you broke seven ribs, that's impressive. You may have a record for that, too. Uh, how fast were you going when you uh, accidentally stepped off the bike? Uh, over 100 miles an hour. Uh, wow, that's amazing. Uh, some people may think, think that breaking records is gender specific, but I'm going to guess that you probably don't agree with that logic. No, there's no gender classes at Bonneville. Actually, all the records that I've broken have been previously held by men. There are more women competing out at Bonneville than ever. And it's a it's really exciting trend seeing more and more women in all aspects of motorsports and in motorcycling. Um, but uh, Bonneville doesn't have gender classes. Just the record that I hold is faster than any woman on two wheels. So that got me in the Guinness Book of World Records as the fastest woman in the world. But I am the fastest in all classes that I, I have records in. And they are not gender specific. Uh, that's amazing. Now, talk a little bit about Bonneville. You don't just have to have one run, right? <gasps> no, and, and what a lot of people don't realize is you get a run up and then you have to average that top speed through the mile. And it's a long time wide open. Well, this qualifies you for the record and then you have to come back the other direction and do it again within two hours and average that top speed through the mile again. So it, it's the average of those two runs. So it's you have to have about you know two miles at, at full speed to get to get a record, and it's a big test on rider and equipment. So you have to be more than a one-run wonder then. 
Absolutely. It can't be just a fluke or just a tailwind. It's It takes some real consistency. Uh, it, it really takes a, a well-built machine and uh, the, the conditions out there are very tough on the machine and on the rider, so it's, it's not as easy as it sounds. All right. Is there anything comparable to the adrenaline rush of going over 232 miles an hour? You know, there's nothing comparable to the rush you get at Bonneville doing these top speeds on the salt. That's why this has always been a dream for me. Um, it's, it's got so much history and there are machines out there that you don't see anywhere in the world. And uh, there's just nothing that is quite like Bonneville and going that fast. Now rumor has it you've gone over 250 miles an hour, is that true? No, no, that is that is a rumor. I've only gone 246.6 miles an hour. That's my top speed. Yeah, I'm not really sure we should continue the interview. So what was 246 like? <laughs> 246 was great. Uh, the, it is crazy out there. There's a, not a whole lot of traction. The bike moves around. I get a lot of wheel spin. I'm affected by any crosswinds. Uh, it, it really is nothing like pavement at all, running on a dry lake bed, running on salt. So uh, there's just there's just nothing like it. it. It's quite a rush. It's a huge adrenaline rush, and it takes kind of a special person, most people say crazy, to really enjoy something like this and do something like this. I want you to know I would never say crazy, so I just want to be clear about that. Now. Uh, question for you. Um, what happened when you shattered the record for the uh, production class of the 1000cc? Oh, breaking the record on the 1000cc production bike was absolutely amazing. It, I, I took the bike as kind of an extra to, to see what it would do. And really, it's a highly contested record because everybody wants to have the fastest 1000 in the world. So going out there and taking, basically, just taking my street bike out there, my personal street bike, a Honda CBR 1000, I was incredibly impressed. And it actually helped me a lot in riding my turbo bike because I could play with my body position and such quite a bit. So it, it was amazing shattering the record. And then last year, I actually went 201 miles an hour on my production class CBR 1000. First time at Speed Week, a bike, a production 1000 had been clocked over 200. So it was just amazing. Now, in NASCAR, the old adage is, is that to make a million dollars in NASCAR, you have to start with two million dollars. So if I wanted to uh, try to set the land speed record, what's the economic model that would work for me? Uh, have deep pockets and don't care where your money goes. It's uh, uh, all racing is expensive. There's just no no cheap form of racing, and Bonneville is it, it's an addictive place. I'm hooked on on going back out there. I spend uh, it, it's really where all my money goes to. So. Uh, it's good to have the help of sponsors now. I'm glad to have Foremost Insurance and Sir Speedy and Honda on board and all the rest of my sponsors. You know, that's that's been key in keeping my program going and advancing and being able to go to the wind tunnel and, and do all the trick things that I need to create the, the best possible race machine with the best possible setup. What do you think of all the custom bikes here at the Ultima Builder Custom Bike Show? Oh, they're amazing. Some of the bikes here at the bike show are, uh, they're, they're all one of a kind. Uh, there's just such a big diversity with the awesome paint jobs and, and trick things on them. Everything from chrome to, you know, flat painted bikes that aren't real flashy. It, it's just amazing. Uh, I've really enjoyed it. I think my favorite is the, the Cook's Custom Bike, the, the Rambler. That thing is just absolutely amazing. If he, if he didn't mind it getting really salty, I, I will take it out and try to break a record on it. I, I just think that thing is a, a, a work of art and quite a, there's so many that are just such an amazing amount of engineering and, and imagination. Now, Leslie, if someone wanted to reach you, how would they do that? Uh, through my website at leslieporterfield.com. Great. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you.
appreciate it. Thank you. It was fun. Oh, good.